So, just doing a quick video on how to export your STLs out of Fusion, ready for 3D printing. Um, and then we'll do another quick video then on how to um, open up Prusa Slicer, which is the slicer software that we use for the 3D printing. And then we might do a third video on doing some setups within Prusa, Prusa Slicer and how that works and things like that. Uh, so I've just opened up Fusion here. I've got a file which is a uh, AirPod case that I was sort of messing around with um, at the moment. So like half a case because I have a section view on there. Uh, so you can see that there's the original case inside and then uh, I was looking at making a case on the other side. So uh, you can switch it on and off to fill it. Let's go, okay, we're going to export this um, component. Now rather than going up to the file and export and doing it that way, Easiest way is if you just right click on the component that you want to do, uh, just scroll down and there is a save as STL file. Click on that. Over here, it'll come up with one of these windows. Uh, just leave all the format as binary. Don't worry about previewing the mesh. The refinement you can change to high if you like. Uh, it does have refinement options in there. Normally, I don't mess around with that. Just go to high. Don't worry about outputting it to a utility. That's if you're looking for a web based. Uh, company or, or space to actually print that for you so we don't tick that leave that off uh, then go OK it'll pop up with this window so it's going to ask you where you want to save that I'm just going to save this to the uh, desktop and obviously name it something your podcast and see there's an STL file click on save simple as that it is now done so if we minimize fusion and go to my desktop you can see that there is my AirPod case STL file uh, that we've just done. Uh, on the desktop, I've got Prusa Slicer here. Uh, so I've just opened that already. That is it here. Um, I'll explain this uh, big chunk of plastic in a sec. Uh, but essentially, this is your build plate. And um, to get your file into that, your STL, click on the little icon up the hip top here that says Add. So you're adding something as opposed to opening. You're not going up to file and opening a project. You're not opening that. You can import your STL that way, or uh, you can just click on the little uh, square icon up here. So I'm going to add that. Go to the desktop. There's my STL. Go open, and there's my STL file on the three on the uh, printer bed. So essentially, that's how easy it is to import that. Um, within that, once you get it into that space, uh, there's numerous things that you can do, and I'll probably do save those for a second video, and we'll look at then the printer setup, what some of these icons mean around the side, and we'll go from that. So I might save that for the next video, uh, but essentially to get your file from Fusion to Prusa Slicer, it's as easy as that. Uh, one more thing that we'll add to this video is if you go up to help. Um, and you go to Prusa 3D drivers. Is it that one I want? That'll give you the software for um, if you had a 3D printer, it'll give you the firmware, the drivers and apps and the handbook. So if you want any of that information, you can get that information from there. Uh, the next thing is if you were in Slicer and you went to software releases. That'll take you to the GitHub portal, which will then have all the releases of uh, Prusa Slicer, in which case you can download a new one. So if you look at the one that I've got here, I've actually running version 2.1.0, uh, but they're up to 2.3.0. So probably should download the latest one, find the version that works for you. So whether that be a uh, Mac version, Linux, Windows, etc., uh, and then click on that link and download that. Um, which I have done and it's on there. So in the next video, I'll uninstall that and go from there. So yes, the way you can get your software, if you've never got it from at all and don't have it to start off with, then you can just do a go for Prusa Slicer, do a search for that. Top link there will do, hit on that. Uh, gives you a little bit of an introduction and download. Uh, but essentially then you can download whether it's Windows, Mac, uh, and Linux in there. Okay, so you download those. It does have a couple of video guides there. Um, it's got detailed documentation about that. 
Uh, and then it's got some features and things like that down here that you can look at as well, which we're going to go over some of those in our next video. So I'm going to leave it there. We'll go into the next video uh, in a second and show you how to edit your video once again.